Welcome to the second video in our Robot C and VEC series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect to and download your code to the physical hardware. Often as programmers, we get the chance to work side by side with others such as mechanical and electrical engineers. That's going to be the scenario we're going to use for the rest of these videos. Typically, the mechanical engineer's responsibility is to take care of the design and physical build, and the electrical engineer is going to take care of all the wiring. Often, all three of us are going to collaborate together on the sensors and feedback used in the build. It is our responsibility to make their design come to life, and to do that as programmers, often we have to test our program before it's actually complete. So we're going to go through the basic steps needed to plug in, communicate with, and download our code to the hardware. Well, let's get started. When attempting to connect the Cortex to the computer so that I can verify my program, there's an order of operations I like to do to try to make sure that it works right the first time. The first thing I like to do is make sure that I have Robot C open, and I do. The next thing I like to do is go ahead and get all of the hardware, batteries, plugs, all the things that I'm going to use for testing my program, I'll go ahead and get those collected up. So here you can see I have a Cortex, I have a charged VEX battery, and I have the hardware. The next important thing is the VEX communication cable, which is a USB-A to USB-A. One end is going to plug into the computer, the other end is going to plug into the Cortex. Let's go ahead and get started. So, I now have one end plugged into the computer, and I'll go ahead and plug the other end into the top of the Cortex. You should see that I have one red blinking light, and I have one solid green light. The red light that's on top indicates the power level of the battery. Once the battery drops below an acceptable level, then that light will turn red. So, it's blinking red right now because I don't even have it plugged in. The battery itself will only plug in one way, so this little keyed portion is going to go to the top. So I'll go ahead and plug that into the Cortex, and I'll turn it on. As long as the battery has enough power to be able to run my programming, then that top light will be green. So I'm good to go so far. I have a green light and a blinking green light. I have my hardware plugged in, and so far it appears that I have communication. So the next thing I want to do is actually ensure that I do have communication, especially if this is the first time that you've plugged in the Cortex. We want to make sure that we give it enough time for the computer to actually find the hardware and get it all set up and make it ready to use. So I'm going to go up to the View tab. I'm going to go down to Select Communication Port, and I want to make sure that I have something here that says Available. Um, what comment on is really depending on your specific computer. So the biggest thing we want to make sure is that we have a COM port available for the VEX robotics to communicate with the Cortex and the computer. So I'll go ahead and select that and hit OK. Alright, so everything looks good so far. The last thing I need to do is to make sure that the firmware on the Cortex matches the firmware of the version of Robot C that I'm using. And especially at the beginning of every year, I typically update my Robot C, which makes the Robot C version on the computer not match the Cortexes, but are typically sitting in a drawer all summer long. I'm going to go up to Robot, down to Download Firmware, and over to Manually Update Firmware. Uh, I haven't had great luck with these automatically updating firmware options, so I'm just going to come down to the bottom one, and the only one I want is straight over. And then I'm going to come to Standard File. So the Robot C firmware is the firmware on the Cortex that I want to go ahead and erase, wipe clean, and make sure that the version on my computer and the versions on the Cortex match. So I'll go ahead and click Standard File. I will see a download progress go across. And once that's completed, I now know that my computer and the Cortex match. That operation is not necessarily a cure-all, but if I have any problems with the Cortex, that's usually one of the first things that I'll try. It doesn't hurt anything, but it goes ahead and it erases the Cortex, makes sure that there's no code or programming currently on it, and sets it back to fresh. So you can now see that I have three green lights. I have one quickly flashing at the bottom, one slowly flashing at the top to say that I have a good battery, and we're good to go. There's one more thing I want to go ahead and do before I download my program to the hardware. When I originally discussed with the mechanical engineer the program that they needed, they just said a motor that was going to be on port 1. So I didn't know exactly which motor they were going to use, and I haven't even set that up yet. So they've now told me that the motor that they're going to use is a 269 motor. They didn't even tell me the speed, so that 127 I put in there at full power was just a placeholder.
Um, they have told me that full power so far should be fine, but that I may need to update that later. So we'll go ahead and leave that at 127, but I need to go ahead and tell the program that a 269 motor is the one that's going to get utilized. So I'm going to come up to Motors and Sensor Setup. I'm going to go to Port 1, and I'm going to slide over to Type, and I'm going to select the 269 VEX motor. So on port 1, I have a VEX 269 motor. We'll get to the rest of this if needed later. I'll go ahead and say apply and OK. So I now have something up here at the top of my program, which I didn't have before, called the Pragma. The Pragma is not something that I type or create. That's something that the motors and sensor setup window goes ahead and does for me. So it tells me that there's a config, that there's a motor on port 1, um, and then everything else is all part of some of those other things that were in that box. Um, but I don't have to type that. That's generated by Robot C itself. Okay, so I have a program. I've compiled it. I've made sure that the pragma matches what I actually have in it so that the Cortex can interpret the outputs correctly and the inputs. And I'm going to go ahead and select Download to Robot. As long as I have good communication, the debugger window should pop up. So this debugger window, as long as it's up, then I should also have these debugger windows down here. Now I've already turned on my motors with PID. As long as this debugger window is open, I can come to Robot, Debugger Windows, and there's a whole bunch of them that I have um, the ability to select and show down here. But those only show while I'm actually communicating and downloaded to the robot. All right. So fingers crossed, I should be able to start the motor on port 1, wait for 3 seconds, and then stop the motor. So I'll go ahead and hit start, and nothing appears to happen. I can see that there is a green bar just for a few seconds on my screen that was telling me that it was running through the program, and that's weird. I physically didn't see anything happen to the motor. So I'll do it again. I'll hit start. Hmm. I don't see anything happening. So what about that green bar? What happens in the Robot C program is it will highlight the line of code below the line that it's running on. So when I hit start, you'll see that the stop motor gets highlighted. That's not the line of code that it's on. That's the line of code that it's getting ready for or prepared for. So I can hit start. It jumps down, and it's going to be green for three seconds, and then it keeps ending my program. Unfortunately, as programmers, one of the first things we want to do is assume that there's something wrong with our program. We want to go through and start manipulating the programming, adding, taking things away, because we think that it's something that we've done is the reason the motor's not running. When in fact, there's a lot of variables that need to be taken into consideration on why the motor might not be running. Let's look at a couple of them. One might have something to do with the battery. I could have a poor connection with the Cortex itself. I could have a battery that's not fully charged, but this green light on here tells me that that's probably not the problem, but it's at least one thing that I want to go ahead and take a look at. One thing could be that the motor is bad, or the motor connection to the Cortex itself is bad. That is something that I can change out pretty quickly, as long as the build's not already done. If the mechanical engineer has gone ahead and put a whole bunch of things into the build, mounted the motor, then sometimes I'll go ahead and skip that one, because that can be a lot of, that could be very time consuming to go ahead and check. I might not actually have communication with the Cortex, but I already checked that. I went into the View tab, select Communication Port, and I made sure that I had communication. And I went through the program itself. I've compiled it. I don't see any problems, but there's one more thing I want to check. I want to make sure that my code is actually turning on the motor in the coding. So I'm going to go back to my download robot. Once my debugger window is up, I want to make sure that I have my motors with PID tab. I should have my VEX 269 motor on port 1. And when I hit start, I should see this power change to 127. And I do. I see that I am sending a signal to the Cortex on port 1 to turn that on. So what's going to be the problem? What actually has to do with the electrical engineer and the mechanical engineer. The electrical engineer, for whatever reason, changed the motor from port 1 to port 10, and that never got communicated down the line. And the mechanical engineer is the only one that I've been directly communicating with. I need to make sure that I communicate with everybody so that we're all involved with any changes that happened. So if you look here, port 1 is on top and port 10 is on the bottom. So the motor has been changed for whatever reason. So I need to change that in my program to reflect that change. So I'm going to go ahead and close the debugger window. I'm going to change it from port 1 to port 10. 
and then I need to go ahead and do that in the pragma as well. I can quickly just go ahead and change it right here and it'll change the motors and sensors setup, but I really like going into the box and manually doing it. So I'm going to make that a none on port 1 and I'm going to come down here and change that to the 269 to reflect that change um, in moving the wires from 1 to 10. And then I'll say OK. I'll go ahead and download to the robot. And this time it still says port 1 down here. It's always going to say port 1 until I hit start. Once you hit start, it actually starts interpreting the program from the top to the bottom. So everything that's left down here is left from the last time. So the only reason it actually has anything down here is because I've already clicked start at least once, and it hasn't reflected that change yet. So as soon as I hit start, that port 1 is going to change to port 10. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And awesome, my motor now runs for 3 seconds and then stops. But that could be a hassle. If that gets changed all the time and my program is longer, then there might be an opportunity where I might miss the change. So where I'm changing it from port 1 to port 10, if that was in my program 10 or 12 times, I'd have a whole bunch of them to change. And yes, I can go up to edit, I can go to find and replace, and I could find all port 1s and replace those by port 10s, but I've got an easier way to do it. I'm going to go ahead and close the debugger window. I'm going to go to motors and sensor setup and I'm going to give this a name. So whatever it is in mechanical build, if that happens to be the right motor, the left motor, the lift motor, um, the claw, whatever it is, I'm going to give that some kind of descriptive name. So I've talked to the mechanical engineer and that just happens to be the drive motor for the left side of this mechanical robot of some sort. So I'm just going to go ahead and call it LEFT MOTOR. And as you see me type, my L is not capitalized, but my M is. That's called camel case. So the head of it is going to stay in lowercase, and then each time I get to another word, I'm going to go ahead and capitalize that. So I have left motor is now my 269, and I can hit OK. So inside my program, I'm not going to ever put port 10 anymore. I'm going to go ahead and call that... L-E-F-T-M-O-T-O-R and know that it is case sensitive however you've typed it in the motor sensor setup is how you have to type it here but there's another thing I want you to notice is now I actually have black text black text in one way or another is something that hasn't been interpreted correctly yet or something that's not in its memory so I'm gonna tell I'm gonna deal with that here in just a second so I'll go ahead and copy that and I'll paste that there so I control C control V so that I had left motor so now if the electrical engineer and the mechanical engineer ever change that from port 10 to port 2 all I have to do is go into the motors and sensor setup move the name from whatever port it was on to the new port change its type and that will reflect in my program and I don't ever have to edit the program again I can do it all in that motors and sensor setup and that's pretty cool so, why was it black? Well, I need to compile it, because remember it has to do with actually reading the code itself. So that left motor name is up here in the pragma, and because that's never been read by the compiler or the downloader, then it doesn't understand that that's a variable that it's going to be using somehow. So if I go ahead and hit compile, it'll read the program, and then that black is gone and it's now red. So it's actually interpreted the pragma up here, saw that I put the word left motor and that equals port 10, so that not every time it saw me type it in, it's changed that from black to red. So let's go ahead and run this one more time just to make sure it does exactly what it's supposed to do. So I'm going to go ahead and download to robot. And as soon as my debugger window comes up, I want you to notice one more thing. Down here at the bottom, it now says port 10 left motor. I made a change and I hadn't hit the start button yet. It's because I compiled it. Once I compiled it, it actually read it, and it interpreted that for the debugger window as well. So if you hit start, it'll read the program for the very first time. If you compile right before you download it, then the motors with PID, the sensors tab, all of these things will already be correct. So that may be one thing you want to get in the habit of doing, is go ahead and click and compile before you hit download. So let's try it one more time. As soon as we hit start, we should see this power change to 127 on port 10, and that should be reflected to the actual cortex itself. Sweet. That's how we control outputs, and that's how we go ahead and download our program and test it to the cortex.